Did you know that a total of 310 lives were lost by July 2022, and in 2023 alone, 17 deaths have already occurred? This tall mountain serves as a scary reminder of the dangerous journey to its beautiful top. Some people blame global warming and the increasing number of climbers for these tragedies. But now, let's focus on the heartbreaking tale of Szilard Suhajda, a climber from Hungary. What led him to risk it all? What happened just 50 meters below the world's highest point? Let's find out. Everest Base Camp is on a big icy hill called Kumbu Glacier. It used to be calm, but now it's crowded with many people. Over 400 climbers come here every year to climb Mount Everest. But there's a problem. Too many people are causing trouble. Around 1,500 people gather here during the climbing season, and things aren't going well. Studies show that the glaciers on Everest have lost a huge amount of ice, as they melted for 2,000 years. But it happened in only 30 years. Amidst the chaos, everyone is worried. Some suggest moving the base camp to a safer place lower on the mountain, because the glacier is getting thinner. However, the Sherpas, who are locals helping climbers, disagree. They say it would make the climb longer and harder. 479 climbers have been given permits, and there are reports of long lines on Everest that can take up to 12 hours to climb. Despite the dangers and complaints, the Nepal government is determined to continue. Just getting a climbing permit costs a huge $15,000. But in recent years, Everest has become more like a tourist attraction. People are willing to pay over $60,000 just to be guided to the top of the mountain. But let's not blame just one person or group. Many people are responsible for the problems we see here. One major issue is that some companies take money from inexperienced climbers. They promise to teach them everything they need to know, but when things get dangerous, they might abandon these climbers to save themselves. By the time you reach the really dangerous part of the mountain, it's usually too late to help someone who's struggling, even if the guide wants to. One person who doesn't fit the mold of a beginner climber is Szilard Suhajda from Hungary. He started with backpacking and long hikes, but his love for adventure grew. He explored the Carpathian Mountains and conquered the challenging peaks of the Alps. Suhajda became fascinated with alpine climbing, which is a tough style of mountaineering. In alpine climbing, you don't rely on extra help like oxygen or too many supplies. Imagine a brave alpine climber moving forward alone or with a partner, driven by the goal of going fast. It's risky and demands great skills and mental strength. These climbers are the best of the best. Then came the moment that sparked Suhajda's passion for mountaineering, the time he conquered Mount Blaine. His fire burned even brighter, and in 2014, at 31 years old, he reached the top of Broad Peak with another Hungarian climber. Five years later, Suhajda faced his biggest challenge yet, K2, the Savage Mountain. He succeeded and became the first Hungarian to conquer its treacherous summit. In early 2022, Suhajda revealed his bold plan to climb the five tallest mountains on Earth. With unwavering determination, he wasted no time and soloed Lhotse in May 2022, leaving everyone amazed. As he approached his 40th birthday in 2023, people heard whispers about his next big climb, Mount Everest. It took years of careful planning, paperwork, and following strict procedures, but Suhajda was ready. With his permit in hand, he was prepared to take on the enormous mountain in his own way. This year, the climbing season started earlier than usual, but the best time to reach the summit was still the same, May 15th to May 26th. So Hajda knew that this was a crucial time, so he prepared carefully. Before mid-May, he went on trips to higher parts of the mountain to get used to the tough conditions at high altitudes. He also set up camp strategically, planning for his final push to the summit. These trips to higher parts of the mountain are tough but necessary. Climbers go up to certain points on the tall peaks to let their bodies adjust to the lack of oxygen. They rest briefly and then return to base camp. They repeat this process many times. It's a challenging training routine that helps their bodies handle the dangerous death zone above 8,000 meters or 26,000 feet. Scientists gave it that name because there's very little oxygen there and it's not suitable for life. For climbers, especially those who don't use extra oxygen, spending too much time there can be very dangerous. After weeks of intense preparation, Suhajda was ready to go. He left the base camp behind and started his climb alone. He was determined, knowing that every step would bring him closer to his dreams. On May 21st, at 5,500 meters above the ground, Suhajda stood alone. He had his gear and a radio with a GPS device. The weather was perfect, no clouds in the sky, 
and the sun was shining brightly. The temperature is also relatively warm for Everest. These were all good signs for climbers. Suhajda followed the popular South Coal route from Nepal. He navigated through the crowded expeditions and managed the occasional traffic jams. Being a solo climber, he had an advantage and moved skillfully through the crowds. But he couldn't ignore the trail of garbage left behind. For three tough days, Suhajda kept climbing the big mountain. Each step was careful and precise. The climb was hard on his body and mind, even more than he expected. At night, he found small ledges where he set up his tent and rested. Slowly but surely, he made progress, always moving upward towards his ultimate goal. Then, on May 24th, the big day came, the day to reach the summit. Before the sun rose, when it was still dark outside, Suhajda got out of his tent. The weather was perfect, just as the experts predicted. It was a great day to conquer Everest. There were no clouds in the sky, the wind was gentle, and the temperature was surprisingly mild. After eating a good meal, he started climbing at 7.30 a.m. With each step, Suhajda got closer to a place called the Balcony, an important point on Everest's dangerous terrain. But the harsh death zone took its toll. His body struggled without enough oxygen, and he felt exhausted. Fatigue weighed him down, making it hard to think clearly. He was fighting both physically and mentally, pushing himself to his limits. In the thin air, something unexpected happened. Ben Ferrer, a member of a famous climbing team, was descending from the summit and found Suhajda alone on the balcony. They exchanged greetings, but Suhajda's tired voice revealed his exhaustion. Ben thought Suhajda was asking about his altitude to inform his team when they should turn back. So Ben innocently said 8,400 meters, but this turned out to be a tragic misunderstanding. Before they went their separate ways, Ben took a picture of Suhajda, capturing a memory of their meeting. Little did he know that this would be the last picture of the mysterious climber. Six long hours passed until another climber, Elias Sakali from Canada, would see Suhajda again. It was nearly 4 p.m. when Elias came across Suhajda. He noticed that Suhajda had climbed another 300 meters since Ben saw him. Elias was concerned for Suhajda and tried to talk to him, but Suhajda didn't seem interested. The sun was setting, painting the sky with orange colors, and the wind became colder. It was getting late to reach the summit, but Suhajda remained quiet, showing no signs of his plans. A feeling of helplessness filled the air as Elias continued his descent, haunted by the encounter. He realized that Suhajda had no backpack or supplies to survive if he got stranded on the unforgiving mountain. Elias felt certain that Suhajda wouldn't return from his difficult journey. Just as Elias lost sight of the summit, he looked back one last time. And there, just a few meters below the peak, stood Suhajda. It was an amazing sight, but also uncertain. As night fell, they lost contact with Suhajda, except for the occasional GPS signals near a challenging part of the mountain, called the Hillary Step, at an altitude of 8,790 meters. As the night passed, a Chinese climber and his Sherpa successfully reached the summit, but the mystery surrounding Suhajda's fate remained. At dawn, six Suhajda was found off the usual path without any safety ropes. To reach him, the Sherpa would have to navigate dangerous terrain. Reports said that Suhajda was alive but suffering from frostbite and the effects of high-altitude sickness. However, the Sherpa who found him couldn't help because he had his own struggling client. So Suhajda was left alone, abandoned on the harsh mountain. When news spread that Suhajda was alive, the base camp quickly responded. Three Sherpas formed a team with a clear mission. They were airlifted by helicopter to Camp 2 and then began the tough climb to where Suhajda was last seen. Normally, it would take 18 exhausting hours to get there, but they were determined to move quickly. On May 26th, two days after Suhajda's summit attempt and one day since he was last seen alive, the Sherpa team arrived at the designated spot. Sadly, Suhajda was nowhere to be found. They searched the area thoroughly, even looking toward the summit with desperation, but they found no trace of the brave climber. They reluctantly decided to stop searching, and Suhajda was declared deceased. His body, elusive and unseen, became a part of Everest forever. What makes this story even more haunting is that it was revealed that Suhajda didn't take his gear when he started his climb on May 24th. Instead, a Sherpa found his clothes and tent left near Camp 2. This means that Suhajda, against all odds, tried to reach the summit with only the clothes he was wearing.